Welcome to Electron Online. Another way in which we've been keeping track of the water content of the atmosphere is by actually measuring via satellite the TPW. What in the world is the TPW? Well, it turns out it stands for the Total Precipitable Water Content. In other words, if all the water in the atmosphere were to come down all at once, we'd have a certain amount of water on the surface and the amount is about two and a half centimeters, which is one inch. So at all times, there's about one inch of precipitable water in the atmosphere on average. So in some places, of course, it's a lot more over tropical areas, and in some places over desert areas, it's a lot less. But how has that changed since they started making measurements in 1983? Well, the total atmosphere content was about two and a half centimeters back in 1983, and by the time 2010 came along, the number had dropped slightly to 2.4 centimeters, which should indicate that in the total atmosphere, there's actually less water then, uh, now than there was then. But if we separate the higher regions of the atmosphere from the lower troposphere, and we just separate out the lower troposphere by itself, we can see that we started out with about 1.9 centimeters in the lower troposphere, but that increased to about two centimeters for the lower troposphere. So as we had seen before, there seems to be a slight increase in the amount of water in the lower troposphere, while there was a significant decrease in the amount of water in the higher troposphere. So nevertheless, at the lower levels, we do see a slight increase. Notice in 1998, when we had a very strong El Nino, there was a significant increase in the water content of the atmosphere compared to other years, and we can clearly see that in the record. But again, so we do, we do see that there's been a slight increase in the lower troposphere water content. If we just simply take a look at all the water available, that's called precipitable water. And we can see that, yes, with some increases, more recent increases in temperature since the 1980s, 1990s, there do seems to be a corresponding increase in the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere, although it's a relatively small amount relative to the total water content. But again, there must be some relationship there with increasing temperatures and some increase in the lower troposphere water content. Why was that different in the previous video when we're looking at the relative humidity? Well, the relative humidity is not necessarily an exact count for how much water you have in the atmosphere. As the temperatures are larger or higher, you can have more water content but lower relative humidity. So that might be masked just a little bit by the fact that there is a relationship there that the higher the temperature, the much more water you need to have the same amount of relative humidity. So it, it turns out that total precipitable water content may be a better measure to see how much water there is in the atmosphere. However, we can go back as far as we did with the relative humidity measurements because those were made with balloons and these are satellite measurements. So again, to get a total picture with the actual empirical data helps us understand what is happening in the atmosphere.